Yoid A's, yeah, yo, it's your boy Ty back here with another video. And in this video today, guys, we're gonna be doing a tier list of some of the best small forwards in NBA 2K23, my team. Now, if there's anybody I missed, I do apologize. Between the power forward, small forward position, I try to, you know, keep it to whichever one is the primary position. So, I'm going to see a lot of those primary small forwards. And I did, I think I included Tim Thomas in here though, because a lot of people are running him at that small forward position. Now, before I dive any further, if you're already new to the channel, man, make sure to smash that subscribe button. We're on the road towards 110,000 subscribers. I'm grinding challenges right now uh, on my Xbox account. I got a lot to get to. I'm actually recording this, guys, on Wednesday, right when those Thanksgiving challenges came out. So, you guys are seeing this on Thursday. Happy Thanksgiving. But yes, I'm going to be grinding Triple Threat Online over, or Triple Threat Offline over here, just kind of mindlessly grinding. But that is why the face cam is not on for those of you guys wondering about it. Now, Alex English started it off, guys. He was on our shooting guard list, too. He can play either position. Now, when you look at this tier list, who is Alex English really better than? And he's better than some guys, but the majority of guys on here are going to be better than Alex English. Alex English is going to be a good defensive player. Has the Carmelo Anthony release. The problem is he's got like a 63 ball, which definitely hurts his value. I don't hate Alex English at all. And I honestly, I, I think if he just had a little better three ball, I wouldn't have a problem running him, but his three ball is just not quite high enough for me. Andrew Wiggins up next. I like Andrew Wiggins quite a bit, guys. Now, with that being said, we have seen some new good takeover rewards. OG and Anobi, who... I think, you know, we'll talk about that later on, who's better, OG or Wiggins. Uh, but, you know, for me, Andrew Wiggins has played on my nobody spent for quite some time now. I'm not going to sit here and slander the card who's played for me and helped me get off the ground nobody spent wise. I think, look, from 2K's perspective, he's been our maybe easiest and good grind at the same time. Shout out to 2K for giving us Andrew Wiggins who was a very solid player for his specific time. A lot of people have been wanting me to talk about Duncan Robinson in my shooting guard video. Look, we'll get to him in this small forward video, but I don't necessarily love this card. I get it. For limited, he can be okay. But look at his defense, guys. He's got a 75 perimeter, 68 interior. I mean, look at his defense badges. They're okay. They're better than, you know, I thought they'd be. But again, he can't dunk the ball. It's just a mediocre card. Is he horrible? No. Is he better than Alex English? No. Duncan Robinson, D tier. Brandon Ingram up next. Can we talk Can we talk about this? I know in maybe one of my videos, whether it was a tier list or ranking video, I put Brandon Ingram in there. But can we talk about it? Is Brandon Ingram better than Andrew Wiggins? Let's, let, let, let's have that conversation and let's talk about it because Brandon Ingram to me, I don't love his release. His defense isn't even comparable to Andrew Wiggins. So how are we making the case that Brandon Ingram is really good or Brandon Ingram's a top small forward in the game? It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't sit right with me because you guys see the cards right here in which Andrew Wiggins is better. I'm throwing Brandon Ingram in seats here. And you know what you guys can do if you don't agree with me? Cry. Happy Thanksgiving. But Brandon Ingram is not very good. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. It is what it is. Wally Zerbiak is a little bit better than Brandon Ingram. And I, I look, I've gained an appreciation for Wally Zerbiak because of Jin Sanity, man. That's really, that's really the reason. Now, why do I like Wally Zerbiak? Well, he plays defense, in my opinion, better than Brandon Ingram. It's still, to me, not great defense, but it's better. Hall of Fame off-ball pest is a good badge, decent perimeter interior. And shooting-wise, he's got Hall of Fame limitless range, which is super cheesy as well. I don't think Wally Zerbiak's the best trophy case card in the game. And honestly, I don't think he's even an A tier small forward in the game. But when we're talking about it, I think he's on the similar playing field to Andrew Wiggins. Jason Tatum still to this day, I'm putting it A tier. I mean, guys, his release is so easy to green in my team. Now, he's not perfect. No limitless range on the card. Yes, that does hurt him. But I still think as far as an all around card in my team, if he is fully badged, Jason Tatum is really, really, really good. And again, I might, I, I, you guys might not agree with me. And that's okay, man. That's what, you know, makes some of these videos fun. If you guys don't agree with me, that's what makes these fun. But I use Jason Tatum in last clause and I don't regret it at all. Do I regret maybe playing him at that power forward position? I mean, maybe because I think his best position is small forward, but still a very solid player in my team. 
Dominic Wilkins for this stage. And, and look, Dominic Wilkins, he's valid because a lot of people are getting him out of those Thanksgiving packs, what I'm grinding for right now. But is he great? No. And, and, and my thing is, if you get him, should you play him over Alex English? I think they're the same tier. Look, Dominic Wilkins is going to do one thing well, and that is dunk the ball, right? I mean, that 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 is really all he is going to do on the court. I would say his shooting's okay, but his release is pretty bad. I mean, his defense isn't horrible. Considering we got Dominic Wilkins on day one, for that time, he wasn't bad. But that time is done with. It's over. He's C tier at this stage. Carmelo Anthony, I'm throwing in B tier. And, it, and it's it's simple. There's one thing that Carmelo Anthony does really well, and that is shoot the ball, which is pretty valuable, especially with that release, right? A lot of people aren't going to necessarily hype up Carmelo Anthony, but you guys got to realize he has the Carmelo Anthony base on quick. That's so hard to get a contest on. That with all these shooting badges makes, makes it really, really tough. He is an absolute cheese ball. People were running Melo over Jason Tatum, and I'm really high on Jason Tatum, but I think that just shows how good Carmelo Anthony truly is and why he does belong in B tier. Diamond Kawhi Leonard up next. Now, again, this is the Diamond Kawhi Leonard, not the pink diamond, Diamond Kawhi Leonard. We'll just, we'll, let, let's just do all the Kawhis while we are here. Let's get the Amethyst up here and I gotta go find the pink diamond. I, I don't see him right now, but, uh, but we'll get, hey, just throw the ruby up here and I don't know if I even included the pink diamond. I can't even, I can't find the pink diamond right now for whatever reason. Meanwhile, uh, it is what it is. We'll, we'll get to him maybe eventually. But yeah, I, I don't see the pink diamond on this list. But let's just start with the pink diamond. And, and if I get to him, I get to him. Pink diamond Kawhi would be A tier, right with Jason Tatum. I don't know who I prefer, whether it's pink diamond Kawhi or Jason Tatum at this point. Are they different players? Yes, 100%. They're hard to even compare because Kawhi's the defensive player. Jason Tatum is that offensive player. And they're just hard to compare. Now, let's compare the pink diamond Kawhi to the diamond Kawhi. Let's do that. Diamond Kawhi gets quite a bit worse. Minus six in the three ball, minus five in the speed. Defense gets quite a bit worse. And so I'm going to throw Diamond Kawhi in C tier. I think it is enough difference to skip that B tier because what is the Diamond Kawhi really doing for you? His three ball goes way down. His speed goes to an 82. He's not nearly as good. The Ami Kawhi, I'm going at D tier. And honestly, the Ruby Kawhi, I'm going at D tier too. I said this when the Kawhis came out. I don't think there's much of a difference between this Ruby Kawhi and the Ami Kawhi. They're literally the exact same cards to me, and that's why they're going to be in the same tier. Now, before we move on, I don't know how I left Pink Diamond uh, Kawhi off this list, but before I move on, I do want to talk about the Jason Tatum versus Kawhi Leonard debate. Because, look, you can have the debate. What I will say is this, Tatum's got the better release. Although Kawhi's release is really easy to time in green, Tatum's got the better release. Kawhi's got way better defense. It's that simple. I mean, it's really preference. Pink Diamond Kawhi would be an A tier. Talk about Elgin Baylor up next. Now, Elgin's not going to be... He is going to be F tier. Elgin Baylor is going to be F tier. And the reason Elgin Baylor is going to be an F tier... And, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to make it super complicated for you guys. There's a reason Elgin Baylor is an F tier. And that reason is because he was like a 10 or so hour grind. Now, if you got him for free... I still don't think he's better than anybody at D tier. I don't. And you guys can say, Ty, it's just his release that's bad. I get that. But his release is horrible. So, like, what are, what are we saying? Like, y'all trying to make it the case that releases don't matter that much. Like, it matters a ton. Elgin Baylor is bad because of his release. But everything else about the card is fine. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you that. But his release is so bad, he's unusable in my team. Only 6'5 at the small forward position. Give me Ruby Kawhi over Diamond Elgin Baylor, and I mean that. Amy Chris Mullen up next. This Amy Chris Mullen was really good for the first week of my team. He was. Chris Mullen was really, really good. Better at the shooting guard position. I'll 100% attest to that. But he was absolute chicken man for the first week. Not anymore, right? He's a little bit outdated. But for that first week, he was chicken man in my team. Bruce Bowen up next. I mean, Bruce, he's going to be that 3 and D type option. Like, I, I don't have any problems with Bruce Bowen in my team. Again, good defense, decent three ball. There's really, I, again, I don't see any flaws in Bruce Bowen. If you guys, you know, want to say, want to say, well, he doesn't have any playmaking or finishing, finishing badges. I get that. But he's 6'7 at the 2, a good 3 and D option. I'm going D tier. Amy Grant Hill. This, it, this is a tough one to me because... If we're going to talk about a fully badged Amy Grant Hill, he's pretty high for me. He really is. If we're talking about a fully badged Grant Hill, he's pretty high. Now, this Grant Hill with a lot of these bronze badges, I'm not super high on. So that makes things a little bit tougher for me. 
But I, I will say overall, I'm going to throw him at C tier. I really do. Because if you do badge him up fully, he's really good. And I got him at C tier. I, that, 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 that's just my thought process behind it. Amy Fred Jones is a garbage man. We got him for free for a reason. The card stinks. He's in F tier. Xavier McDaniel gives you a little bit of, of something on the defensive end of the court. He gives you enough that I do think he's D tier. Is he great? No. But again, not that bad. Amy Brown, again, another card I'm throwing at D tier. A lot of these cards, they're old, guys. They're cards we wouldn't even think about using anymore, but they're who we had at the start of the game. Most of them are going to be D tier at this stage. Jang up next. Now, here's the deal, man. When this card came out, I remember people were hyped up about him because his release is easy to green. But what does he really give you on the court? I mean, he is 6'10", maybe C tier. But how many people use Jang and had success with him? I just... I just never even hear about this card or heard about him even when he came out. I'm going to keep him at D tier. Jalen Williams up next. I mean, I just, these are cards that people got for Cade Cunningham, but you never really heard about these cards. I mean, Jalen Williams, who is running him? I don't know. I'm going to throw him at D tier and keep him there. Yes, we basically maxed out this small for this. We had like 46 people on it, I think. So it's going to be a pretty thick list. AK 47. I'm going to throw it C tier. I remember people were trying to tell me that Andre Karolinka was better than Jason Tatum. And I looked at them and I'm like, you guys are so silly. Yes, silly for even saying that. Like the card, Andre Karolinko does defend really well. I'll give I'll give you all the credit. His defense is really solid. But he's only got 84 speed. His his release is weird because it's 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 just slow, right? This year his release is really slow. It is the way it is. But I mean, AK is not bad in general. Gordon Hayward up next. And I said it a while ago. One of the most underrated trophy case rewards is Gordon Hayward. You could make the case he's an F or he's an S tier small forward, and I'm not gonna argue with it. I am so high on Gordon Hayward because he is one of the most complete cards in my team. Look up and down this card and tell me where the flaws are at. Tell me. I, I would I would love to hear where y'all think there's a flaw in Gordon Hayward. Because there are no flaws. None. There's not one flaw. His release is good. His driving dunks at an 85. He can standing dunk. His playmaking is fine. His defense with Hall of Fame Chase the Artist is elite. There is no... He can get every badge in the game. There's literally no flaws in Gordon Hayward. The only reason I'm not running him is because I got Tim and Braun. If I didn't have them, I might lock in for Gordon Hayward. That's how high I am on the card. Paige Stoyakovich up next. I'm going to throw Paige in B tier. I really believe Paige is one of the most underrated trophy case rewards. And I'm, I'm not going to compare him straight away to Wally Zerbiak because they are different cards. But here's what here's what I'm going to say. They both provide something from a trophy case card that you can't really get from the auction house. And that's just the ability to shoot lights out. I mean, you can get that in the auction house. But how many people have this array of shooting badges? Maybe one. I, 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 Peja might be the only one with this type of shooting badges. It's just ridiculous. He's 6'9 as well. I played a decent guy with Peja in my like one game with him, and Peja lit him up. It's that simple. Scotty Pippen up next. I'm going to throw Pip at A tier. It's crazy to me that our level 40 reward for season one was better than, than our level 40 reward from this season. I mean, Scottie Pippen compared to Devin Booker. You can't even compare this card. Scottie Pippen still can play this day. And if you want to run Scottie Pippen in calls, I have no problem with it. I got no issues with it. He's chicken man, plays decent defense. No problems uh, from me on that. Now, here's where things get interesting because I think I got to put KD and S tier, although I really don't like Kevin Durant. And, 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 and that's that's the problem I'm having. Because when, when it comes down to it, do I like Kevin Durant or Gordon Hayward more? I don't know. Because, and you guys, you guys can get mad at me for saying this all you want. Gordon's got a better release. KD's obviously taller with a better player, model player build. Stat-wise, KD might be a little bit better. I don't know. I'm going to give KD the slight advantage. But just trust me, guys. When I tell you, I really don't like Pink Diamond Kevin Durant. Because I don't. And, and, and I know a lot of people do. And, and, and that's fine if you do, but I'm not one that's very high on that Kevin Durant. Now, it looks like, did I get the Diamond KD in here? Oh, there's the Pink Diamond Kawhi. That's the guy we're waiting on. Pink Diamond Kawhi, I'm going A tier. All right, let's see. Do we have Diamond KD? I don't see him here. He might be on this list. Uh, but let's we'll, we'll talk about him anyway. Amy KD and Diamond KD, where do they rank on this list? You guys might be asking. Well, let's, let, let, let's talk about it. Diamond KD... 
he's pretty solid compared to the pink diamond i mean yeah he might not be as good of a shooter but still gonna give you that same type of feel i would probably throw diamond kd in b tier to be honest with you and then the ami kd he's quite a bit worse that that's really where you're gonna notice the downfall ami kd is d tier so i go d tier for ami kd b tier for diamond kd and and then s tier for that pink diamond kd galinari up next now i debated whether to put him on our power forward or small forward list He's primary small forward, so that's honestly where he's at. Probably going to want to play him at that power forward position, though. Here's the deal. He is a good stretch big, but defensively, he's horrible. And and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I don't like Gallinari at all. I might keep him at B tier, but I'd, I, I, I'd rather run Pedro Stoyakovic. I'd rather run, you know, Wally Zerbiak. I, I mean, it, I'm putting him at C tier. I don't see it in Gallo. I really don't. And I know I'm going to get probably a lot of hate because there are some people who like this card. But for me, I'm sorry, guys. I don't see it with Danilo Gallinari. Chuck Person up next. I'm not even going to spend time talking about this card. If you grind, not, not if you got this card. If you got this card out of the book uh, when these cards were available, fine, whatever. If you grinded for Chuck Person, you wasted a moment of your life. A moment of your life that you could have spent doing something productive. You were grinding for Chuck Person. An absolute garbage man at my, don't even get me started. It's fine. Karis Levert up next. I like Karis, man. I like Karis. Am I gassing it by putting him in B tier? Probably, but I like Karis, man. And tell me the flaws in Karis Levert. His release is smooth. He can handle the ball decently. Defensively is solid. Karis Levert is one of the most underrated and not talked about cards in the entire community. I'm telling you guys this right now. If I didn't have like Andrew Wiggins in them or if I was just restarting my no money spent, which... I could maybe do, I, I, I guess, could maybe restart the nobody spent. Karis LeVert might make the squad. I mean, he's that good. Already talked about Bruce Bowen. Let's get to the Royce O'Neal. Now, Royce O'Neal, he was a moments card. Shout out to Royce O'Neal. Triple double, man. That's crazy to even think about. 6'6", six, 6'10", six, six, wingspan. Can shoot it a little bit. Decent speed, lateral quickness. Defensively, going to be really solid is Royce O'Neal. The problem is, I mean, look. He's got pro dribble style. I mean, it, 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 he's not going to make plays for you. He's 6'6 at this small forward position, and he's not going to be able to make that many plays for you. He's not even as good as Jeremy Grant, who isn't in this on this list. He'll be in our next one. But that's kind of who I'm comparing him to because Jeremy Grant was also a moments player. I'm just not that high on Royce O'Neal. Talk about a moments card that stinks. It's Keldon Johnson. This card is an absolute garbage man in my team. I don't care. His release is literally horrible. He's F2. If you got him, congrats. You got a free moments card for card collector. But the card literally stinks in my team. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as Keldon Johnson stinks. Dougie McDermott up next. Hey, Doug McDermott is knocked down. You can say whatever you want about Dougie me or Doug McDermott. He he's knocked down, man, and he's got 89 speed with 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 the with, with the Evo. There's really no flaws with him. I like his release. He's got good speed. Can dunk the ball with a 95 driving dunk. Doug McDermott's going B tier for me. I like the card quite a bit. And Zaire Williams is another card I like quite a bit. 2K did something right with these glitch Devos. I honest, and you guys might not like them, but I'm a pretty big fan of these glitch Devos. For Zaire Williams, his release is good. Hall of Fame catch and shoot. Finishing wise, obviously good with a 90 driving dunk. Defensively, can hold it down. Please, guys, at 6'9, tell me where you see the flaws of Zaire Williams. Because I don't see any. I, I, I could make this video forever, and I don't see any flaws in Zaire Williams. The dude's got basically 40 base badges as well which is just absolutely absurd. I mean, that that's just crazy for for, 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 for an Evo card. I mean, I know I know. in, in, in a kind of popular subject is, okay, Ty, but you can't add badges to Evo cards. So no unpluckable, no anchor, none of these badges. That's okay when you've got enough and which Zaire Williams does. I mean, when you ask me right now, Zaire Williams or, An or An Andrew Wiggins, I don't know who I would give you. And I'm, 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 I'm saying that in the most honest way possible. I like both cards quite a bit. Card I don't like is Taylor Horton Tucker. Like, some of these cards are really good. And then you get a guy like Horton Tucker and you're just like, what are we doing, 2K? Like, this card... And, 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 and I can't fault the stats, the batters. It's fine. But he's 6'4 at the 2. 6'4 four at the shooting guard position it's not 2k's fault this guy's 6-4 but i mean could y'all at least i know he's not a point bar point guard could you give him point guard eligibility so maybe he'd be somewhat useful he's going d tier for me i mean 
who is going to get Taylor Horton Tucker and use a 6'4 shooting guard at this stage in my team? Certainly not me. Joe Ingles up next. He's not very good either. Talk about a guy with a bad release. It's Joe Ingles. His release is very bad. And I, 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 he's only a 6'8". Not great. I mean, he's fine. Like, his again, stat badge-wise, you look at the card and you're like, dang, he can, he can do some things, which he can. I mean, he's a complete player. I just don't like his release. That's why, for me, he's going in D tier. Franz Wagner up next. As much as I want to put Franz in B tier, I don't know if I can. Now, you know what? You know what? You know, this is my list. You know what? I'm pulling a DBG. This is my list. Franz Wagner is B tier. I don't care who you are. This card is B tier. He can defend. He's got a good release. He can shoot lights out. I don't care who you are. Franz Wagner is B tier, and and I don't I don't I don't I don't have any any you know second thoughts on this. I was I was unsure, and I'm like you know what this is my list. The dude's got a great release, literally fantastic release, good player build. Franz Wagner is B tier for me. Kiki Vanderway up next. I don't know about Kiki, man. I mean, here's here's here, here's what I want to do. Okay, here's what I want to do. I want to compare Kiki and Wally Zerbia. That's, that's really what I want to do. Why? Because I want to see if Kiki deserves this spot up high with a guy like Wally Zerbiak. Kiki's better post moves, a little better dunker. Badge-wise, he's just not the same. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're the same tier. Maybe they've got the same release. I just, I mean, Wally's just going to be a better version of Kiki. It's that simple. So if you like Wally, probably going to like Kiki. Kiki's just a worse version of him. Now we got our bronze, pink diamond bronze, S tier, diamond bronze, I'm going to throw in, uh, I'm going to throw him in B tier, and then Amy bronze, I'm going to throw in C tier. I, it, it's LeBron James. I don't know how else to phrase it. His player model is ridiculous. His release is easy to green. It's LeBron James. How, how else do you want me to phrase it? I don't, I, don't, I don't know how else to phrase it at this stage. LeBron James has his player build, which, I mean, you can't really teach player builds. If you have a certain player build that's immaculate, you're going to have that. His release is solid enough. He, he, he's that good. Metal World Peace, Ron Artest. I don't, I don't know why. I, I guess the only reason I included this Amy is because he doesn't have shooting guard eligibility. His release is going to be good, but his stats are pretty bad in my team. Mikael Bridges up next. And here's where things get tough. Because I feel like Mikael Bridges should be A tier. But should he? I mean, I mean, I mean let's, let's be honest with each other. Is this Mikael... He has an 80 standing dunk. Can't really handle the ball that well. His release is okay. Is he as good as any of these guys at A tier? No, he belongs at B tier. And, 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 and it's hard because B tier is just a bunch of guys, but... I don't think Mikael Bridges is going to be that much better than a guy like Zaire Williams. And I'm going to hold true to that statement. I, re I really will. Because look, when you Evo this card, how are you? I mean, I, yes, defensively, he's going to be a little bit better. But offensively, Zaire Williams is going to be a lot better. Badge-wise, Zaire Williams is better. Hey, pick your, pick your battles, man. I think they're on the same playing field. A guy I think personally is better than Mikael Bridges is OG Ananobi. Now, this is my opinion, okay? Now, everybody's not going to agree with this. But I personally think OG does more on the court for you than Mikael Bridges. This is my opinion. Why? An inch taller. I feel like he's wider. Got that wider player build. You're looking at 209 to 232. OG, in my opinion, has about as smooth as release as you can get. And Mikael Bridges, you got to lock in a bunch of MT for. OG and Anobi is free. So I'm, yes, giving free card bias. It is the way it is. I don't, I don't make the rules. OG and Anobi is A tier. Him, Thomas, S tier. S tier. S tier, S tier. There's no ifs, there's no ands, there's no buts about it. Tim Thomas is S tier. If you want to disagree, hey, play me. I'll literally drop 40 on your head with Tim Thomas and not think twice about it. That is going to wrap it up for our small four tier list. Yes, it's pretty bottom heavy, but I did include a lot of garbage men on this list. I'm gonna leave it to this top three because I think these three definitely clear everybody at A tier. And honestly, I'm gonna move OG down because he belongs more in this tier than at A tier. Let me know who I'm too high on, too low on. Drop a like on the video, guys. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.